Welcome back to another Z video. Today I have two very important goals I want to accomplish on the car. The very first one being, I need to make an exhaust for the car. If you guys remember in the last video, we got to drive the car on the street and it was loud as heck. We basically have an open downpipe at the moment and it just screams down the street. Not very ideal for a daily, you know what I mean? And secondly, I need to wire the fuel pump to work with the key because right now I just have the fuel pump jumped to bypass the Z fuel pump module. But let's do the exhaust first. So, this is the exhaust that came with the car, and on the bottom, it says... Bro Speed! I'm really curious to see how they sound, so I definitely want to utilize these mufflers at least. And I also have this downpipe. Now this downpipe is designed to fit the manifold that's on the KA right now, and we already verified that it will not fit the Z. This upper portion of the pipe actually hits the floorboard of the Z, so we're gonna have to make something work with that. And also, it looks like they plasma cut this exhaust off. So we're gonna have to figure something out with that. But I also picked up this exhaust last night from Peyton. Thanks again, Peyton, the Z parts plug. So we got two big old mufflers, but it has the mid pipe and also the down pipe. Let's lay all this out so we have a better idea of what we're working with. Oh, there it is. So I've laid out our two options, which I think we're gonna combine them into one option. We have the KA downpipe with the aftermarket exhaust that came with the car. This is about how much of the exhaust is actually missing that's about the size of a catalytic converter. So this is the stock 300ZX NA driver side downpipe, which I'm not too confident is gonna line up exactly to the KA header, but we're gonna find out. And it actually has the flanges that bolt directly to the mid pipe and down to the stock mufflers. But I would like to use at least this downpipe with the cat and maybe even this, I think this is an H pipe they said. I'm gonna have to make sure it's an H pipe because if it's not, then I'll just cut off one side and we'll somehow utilize that X pipe to split it into these two. So I think it'd be cool to have quad tips on a KA because then when people are behind the Z, they would not expect anything. They would be like, oh, it's just a VG, it has four tips. So step one, we'll get the car jacked up and test fit the stock down pipe. All right, car is up in the air. Let's test fit this down pipe. So it's looking to me that this flange is at the incorrect orientation. None of the studs line up. So I'm gonna have to chop this down pipe, rotate it, and go from there. Can't even mount it because we don't even have this mount at all on the car. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to attach to the cross member, but. Now before I go about chopping up this down pipe, I wanna mount the rest of this stock exhaust onto the car. Because if I have this on the car, I'll know exactly where this flange needs to be and I can line this flange up and then I'll be able to line up that chopped off section where it needs to go. So that means I need to tack weld at least this back together. This was unfortunately cut in half and honestly this is kind of rusty and I'm gonna have to go over some of these welds. And now I'm using the stock one and not the aftermarket exhaust because these hangers were cut off and obviously there's no flange on the end of this so it would be pointless. Hope that makes sense. We can now slide this exhaust under the car and mount it up. But first I want to make sure that the car has the rubber exhaust hangers. Oh, actually this has a hanger on it already. That's strange. <laughs> Wait, is that welded to the frame rail? What the heck? Bro, what is this? <laughs> okay, well it has the stock ones, but I don't know why they thought they needed to weld a new mount to the frame rail. Interesting, looks like it's on this side as well. Good job there. And here's another one. This one actually does look factory, so that's good. This thing's a little rustier than I remember. But I mean, at least the rest of the car is fine. I'm just seeing some rust back here. Luckily, this piece is only a shield for the fuel filler neck. Not too crazy of a piece to be worried about being rusty. Honestly, I'm thinking about saving myself a step here. Since there's already exhaust hangers in these mounts, I kind of want to mount up the aftermarket exhaust so I can line those hangers up because it looks like these are the hangers that were cut off. If I can get these exactly where they need to go, that'll save me a whole bunch of time rather than taking them out, losing what orientation to go in. So let's do that really quick. I'm under the car prepping the hanger metal to be welded because you can't really weld to rust. And I'm realizing why these were cut off because you can't even remove the hanger. This is inaccessible. So no wonder why they just cut it off. What the heck? I'm definitely gonna delete these, that's that's dumb. I'm gonna utilize these if anything. Since we discovered that, I'm gonna just remove this one. 
don't even want to use that exhaust. I'm going to be honest with you. We'll just use the stock exhaust. We'll find a better exhaust on the line. Since I'm planning on using the stock exhaust, and definitely this portion, I need to weld up some of these rust holes that have formed. Looks like some of them have already been patched previously. So we're going to do the same thing. I already grinded off some of the rust that was on it to try and fill it in better. Stock exhaust is now fully patched up. And I know a lot of you wanted to hear the aftermarket exhaust, and trust me, I did as well. But let's be honest, an NAKA doesn't sound good on aftermarket exhaust. Plus, think about it. If you see this thing rolling around with the stock exhaust, the last thing you're going to expect is a KA to be under the hood. And I also removed the rest of the cutoff hangers, so we are good to go. Let's slide this thing in. It does suck that we're missing one tip. I'm sure I can find that though. Wait a second, I just realized we never capped off the other input. Unfortunately, I don't have any scrap metal here, so I think what I'm gonna do is just cut a little sliver off of the aftermarket exhaust and then just weld it shut. Got this little guy capped up. Put a little smiley face on him. Now we can throw it under the car. Oh, that's hot still. <laughs> I'm thinking it might be easiest to put on the rear muffler hanger first, and then I can jack up that midpoint. I hate working with exhaust. It gives me PTSD because one day when I was working on my 240, the exhaust fell on my face. My friend pulled it out. We were trying to align it or whatever. But that's actually how I chipped my tooth. I'm gonna not be directly under it this time. <laughs> These hangers were being a pain to get in. So I'm gonna spray some lubricant into the hanger. That'll definitely ease it up. Now yeah, we'll put them on here too, what the heck. Just spraying some rust prevention. Now we need to jack up the center of the exhaust, but before I do that, I wanna clean off some of this gasket. It's really crusty on here too. Usually it just flakes off pretty nicely, but not the case this time. So after I do that, I need to match up some hardware to use to mount the cat to that mid pipe. I already found one nut. Looks like there's one stud in the cat. And it looks like this one was threaded, but it's looking uh, not too promising. It doesn't really thread in very nicely. So I might just drill that out and then just have it like bolt and nut style. To get access to the back, I'm gonna need to take off this heat shield, which is pretty cool. It actually says Nissan on it. But luckily it's just four bolts, so that should come off no problem. Oh, one, two, three, four. Wow, they all broke loose. Pretty nifty. Well, I do have to take off this heat shield as well. It's kind of crazy how they wrap this entire dump though. Is it one piece? Yeah, it might be. Because I'm going to have to chop up here, you know what I mean? have these metal clamps holding it on to pretty interesting this is where the EGR actually goes to on the BG luckily it's already deleted well, I took these clamps off but it looks like they fold this over from the factory I'm gonna try and unfold this nicely and if it doesn't come off I'm just gonna grind it off well I got this first layer off but it looks like they actually spot weld this together that's a pretty intense heat shield. All right, I ended up just cutting it right here because this is the only area we really need to work with. Wow, looks like it was insulated too. I would have never guessed there was insulation inside an exhaust pipe. Down pipe is ready to be mounted. Got our hardware ready to go. Also, I noticed this harness, it looks snipped. I'm assuming this is for an O2 sensor. There's one on each side. Does anyone know? Uh-oh, am I gonna need a longer bolt? Oh, no, we're good. All right, we are ready to go up. So with the exhaust fully jacked up to where it needs to be, everything is perfectly aligned. This is exactly how the flange sits. 
So it looks like we're gonna have to modify the Z flange to have less of a slope. Cause right now it's like basically 90. It sucks because I ordered a flex pipe to weld onto here, but it didn't show up in time. So we're gonna have to do that later on top of this. <laughs> Whatever, we're just trying to get the exhaust connected for today. I think I'm gonna start by making a cut right around here. And then we'll see what we can work with. All right, so we've got our flange cut. Now I'm going to fully mount this onto the exhaust manifold. All right, now we will jack up the exhaust once again, and we will see how much of a gap we need to fill. This is about where we need to be, and that's honestly not too bad. That's all we need to fill. So let's cut up some of the aftermarket exhaust, and we will use that. I'm thinking maybe this slightly angled piece will be perfect. Zing zing. Now this is the easiest part. Now that we have our little section that we want to use, you just line it up. There we go. It's done. I also went ahead and took off the rest of the heat shield because I felt like that was going to be a future rattle. It was already starting to rattle just handling it. But something I need to order is the exhaust hanger that connects to the trans mount. Because this cat adds some significant weight to the exhaust. And I have the jack completely off of the exhaust. So this is how it will hang. Which is perfect. We nailed it. But I would still like additional support here. That way we're not risking snapping the exhaust manifold studs. That's a really hard piece to find for an S chassis. They have a very similar setup, but I'm hoping it's not the same situation for a Z. I feel like there's a lot more part out Zs than there are S chassis, so we'll see. Well, I guess the next step is uh, starting it up and making sure there's no exhaust leaks. I didn't have any gaskets because they didn't come in in time, just like my flex pipe. So the flanges might leak, but you know what? That's all right. At least we have a full exhaust now and hopefully it's quiet. Let's see. So quiet. There is a slight exhaust leak though. I definitely hear it coming from right here. But not bad. Let's see where it's coming from. Oh, right here. Literally right on the gasket, like I said. That's not leaking. That's not leaking. Surprisingly, I don't even feel a leak on this one at all. Something I'm very curious about is, is the exhaust coming out evenly on both tips. Primary side. Dude, it is. No way. You definitely feel a little bit more on this side, but it's crazy that it is actually dual on a KA. <laughs> this sounds good though. You'd never know this is a KA. Now, while I still have the car up in the air, I want to wire in the speed sensor. And you're probably wondering why it needs to be in the air. Well, when I got this transmission, the harness for it was previously cut. So that kind of stinks. So I'm going to have to somehow connect these wires all the way to this point. Right around here. Although there are some connectors here. So I'm going to have to match up some of the colors. I don't know if they're the same from automatic to manual. So I have some diagrams in front of me that I'm going to have to go through and figure out. I have determined what wires I need to connect. I'm going to solder them together and then heat shrink them. Luckily I can reach it from the top though. That's a huge plus. We got the speed sensor all wrapped up. Honestly, I want to do the fuel pump situation. So we currently have this jump straight from battery positive all the way down to the fuel pump. And I don't like that. That's not really the best way to go about things. So this is going to be kind of difficult to do by myself because it's a very short window. I need to figure out which wire from the KA harness has the fuel pump prime signal and then match that to the 300ZX fuel pump prime signal. I thought I had that figured out before, but it didn't work. So I'm gonna have to relook into it. Maybe I had something mixed up. No more sketchy wire. And we have our harness jumped over there. Well, I'd say the Z is due for another test drive, but there must have been a lug nut fee for something because for some reason, there's only two lug nuts on each wheel. 
So if you haven't noticed by now, this is kind of like a budget build Z project. So let's put some budget lug nuts on it. Damn, that's cool. The key actually says Nismo on it. That looks so cool. <laughs> it's the little details. Imagine pulling up to a meet with a completely stock body Z and you're like, check out the lug nuts, bro. <laughs> Oh, here's a little trivia for you guys. What other Nismo part is on the car? Three, two, one. If you guessed trans mount, you are correct. How many of you guessed it? We're installing the bash bar with the fog lights so we get the full effect this time. And we might as well put on turn signals too, right? I mean, this is a full car now. Man, that looks sick. Full front end. It is missing some of the tabs that fly off of these. I don't know why they designed it like this. It's like a little cap and they always fall off, but other than that, looks pretty dang good. This could use some better fitment, but yeah, previous owner put a self taper through a threaded hole. We'll figure that out later. But the last thing I need is a radiator cap. So we're gonna go seal it off of the work truck. My new cap still didn't show up, but skunk two will do. Official test drive to get gas. It's so quiet. I love it. Does that mean I'm getting old? Maybe. It might. I gotta say, this thing is slow very very slow i didn't give it a full womp yet but but also how do you turn the wipers on this windshield is so dirty oh missed oh, that was the back one oops i just remembered i don't even have front wipers on i think you have to actually hit this button oh well another day's problem <laughs> one thing at a time also the speed sensor isn't working and the fuel gauge isn't working. Those should actually be functioning right now. Not so much the temp gauge or the RPM, so I don't know, maybe the cluster's not plugged in or maybe there's a fuse for it? I don't know. I would love to get all this junk out of here. And the tan, oh my gosh, gotta, gotta get rid of the tan. What side is the gas door on? This side? Oh, there it goes. Let's see if our lights work. Also, I didn't check if the fog lights work. I think you have to have the headlights on for those to work though. Green? Why is this green? Turn signal works. Fog light, fog light, turn signal. Okay, okay. Fitment's kind of whack in the front. Took zero time to put that on. Oh, the rear marker, rear lights work. Oh, the brake lights are stuck on, kind of annoying, so I'll have to figure that out. Good EVAP system, well, good vacuum. Before I turn off the engine, let's check how it's looking. Sweet. Check the temperature of the lower coolant hose. Yeah, and it's not bad. We're good. We're still filling up with fuel. We're like, crap, are we leaking? Oh, it just stopped. Eight, 17 gallons? What? Dude, the, the biggest tank I have is the Integra. It's like 13. Like, that 17. Like truck <laughs> that is like a truck gas tank, I think. I'm not topping it off. No, that's... Yeah, Google it. Let's see. How low was this thing running on? 
18 point seven. Yeah. And we got 17. Yeah, who knows how long the fuel was sitting in there to begin with. It better feel faster now, I swear. <laughs> it was pretty slow on the way here. What are we gonna name this thing? 240 ZX. Tank size, 18. Add fuel. It doesn't really matter so much because the odometer still doesn't work, unfortunately, but it's a good habit to keep. We're gonna keep it going. 136, 450. No, there's like no liquid left. It, it needs it bad. Oh, is that poop stained on my windshield? It's probably just smearing it all around, let's be honest. Oh, much better. Actually, it looks like the fuel gauge was working. We got about three quarters of a tank. Well, maybe not working fully. It's, it should be full right now, I'd hope. <laughs> but on the drive there, it was below E. So I wonder if it's just offset. My Integra sedan is like that too, actually. It doesn't read all the way full, and then when it's empty, it goes past the E line. Yeah, we're just cruising around, man. This doing pretty good no issues at all does have that slight exhaust leak right in the center it's bothering me so much it's all I hear is exhaust leak also I'm really confused why the speed sensor isn't working I hope the speed sensor itself isn't busted I don't know I gotta figure that out as well this thing rides like a Cadillac so smooth I'm not used to that Last official look over. Well, I think it passed the test. Test drive. That lower hose isn't even that warm. It's got a mad timing chain rattle though. Typical KA. Yeah, overall, we're good. KA 300ZX. <laughs> that smile <laughs> <laughs> feels good feels slow though Franzi came by with the four-door work truck because apparently it's making some weird noises in the front so let's go on a little test drive and make sure <laughs> bless bless you Well, it's kind of difficult to hear where that was coming from, but it definitely sounded like the right side at least. And we recently replaced the rear brakes. So it kind of makes me think we should look into the front brakes. So we'll jack up the front of the car and see what's going on. The first thing I like to do when I jack up a car is shake the wheels up and down and side to side. This will check your suspension. Oh, oh my God. Oh, that's where the noise is coming from. Oh my God, that's unholy. I don't know if that goes through the video, but oh, that's like, sounds like nails on the chalkboard. <laughs> but no, you know, I just like to shake it just to make sure the suspension's tight. It's the easiest, quickest way to find out. It's hard to tell how much brake pad is left. Let's take off this caliper. Caliper looks good. You don't really want this to dangle because that damages the brake line. Kind of put it up somewhere. Let's check the brake pads. Oh my gosh. What brake pads? <laughs> There's nothing left of this thing. One millimeter. Right on the squeaker. You can see it's shiny. That's how you can tell. Well, those are toast. The outer pad is actually starting to delam. That's not good. All right, well, it looks like we need brakes. And while we're at it, we're gonna replace these rotors because they're pretty grooved. Plus, they're already thin enough and crusty enough. Oop. Crusty. Oh yeah, look at all that rust in there. <laughs> Let's verify we got the right stuff. The best way to compare them is have one like this and put the other one upside down and they should butt up edge to edge on top edge to edge on the bottom so that's good and then we'll do it again just to make sure on this side butt to butt 
Rotors are correct. Brake pads. Oh, it came with grease. That's nice. And the hardware. These are 98 to 01 Integra Type R spec brake pads. They're different from the base model because this is five lug in the front with 36 millimeter spline on the axle. Match that up to there. And it's the same. Perfect. But here's the trivia question for you. What other car in America is sold with the same front brake pads? Anyone know? If you guessed CRV, you are correct. That's right. CRV front brakes are the exact same as late model Integra Type R. Kind of crazy to think like that. So when I clean off rotors, I keep it in the bag and I wrap it around my hand and then spray brake clean. It's not getting on my hand at all, just the rotor. And this is actually carb cleaner. It's basically the same thing. I don't have any brake clean, so gotta use what you got. After the rotor is installed, I personally like to install the caliper bracket right after. And before you do that, you wanna make sure that your slide pins are free, which in this case they are, because I recently greased these. Next, we'll install our new brake hardware. This is actually really nice hardware. It has these hold down clips on it. These are power stop brakes, by the way. Not sponsored, just actually good quality. And now, I like to put grease only where the brake pad touches. I'll show you what I mean. So when you're installing the brake pad into the shins, just the edges of the brake pad are touching. Some people like to lather up the whole top of it. I never like to do that. I've never had a problem not doing that, so to each their own. And you always want to test fit these because you want to make sure that they fit freely. If they're too tight, it's going to keep the brake slightly applied and it's going to burn your brake pads down faster, kill your gas mileage, and burn your wallet. Not good. Carefully applying some high temp grease, trying not to get it on the rotor. We're all greased up. We'll throw our brake pads on now. And now if you notice, there's two brake pads in this package that have shins. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's none. Now, a lot of people, I always see this, they put the shims on the outside. The outside does not get a shim. This only goes on the inside pad. Now, if you notice, these squeakers, that's what these are called, are on opposite sides. It needs to go on the trailing side. So if the wheel spins this way, that is not trailing, that's leading. This would be trailing. So this one is the right inside brake pad. That's how you can tell. The brake pads are ready to go. Next thing we have to do is push in the piston on the caliper. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. The correct way is technically using a C-clamp, which I actually have that tool. And if you don't, you can just use the channel locks and squeeze it down. Sometimes you can even do it by hand. Usually newer cars you can do that, but this car is nearing 30 years old, so <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little crusty. And it's a winter beater, and a daily, and a work truck. So this is what it'll look like if you're using a C-clamp. I put an old brake pad here in between the piston and the C-clamp so it can push down evenly. Now ideally, if you know you're gonna do brakes, you can do this step first while the caliper is still installed on the knuckle itself. It makes it way easier because you don't have to hold it with your hand. It'll be mounted, but here we are. We're getting it done. Install the caliper. Now, this is really important as well. A lot of people overlook this step and wonder why their brakes lock up. You wanna make sure that the lines that are on your brake line are straight. Because when you have the caliper off and it's spinning and dangling, sometimes it can twist and that will bind the brake fluid in the line. So make sure that these are straight and they are, so we are good to install this caliper. We are ready for a test drive. First thing, pump the brake pedal. Get those pistons bottomed out. Looks like Franzi's coming with us. <laughs> oh, so far so good. It was already squeaking when we were backing out the driveway last time. She's been driving around for like a week and I was like, Gee! I've been breaking necks in traffic and not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, what pile of junk is around? Right up? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Piece of shit work truck. <laughs> Little no do more. they know, this thing hauls engines, firewalls, core supports. <laughs> you name it. It does it all. For real. Hauls more than 90% of American pickup trucks today. <laughs> yeah, well, I think uh, job well done. We'll have to add that to the maintenance log. 
date, mileage, what you did. Sometimes I even like to write down the part numbers or where I got them, especially if they have a warranty on it. Good to keep track. Well, thank you guys for sticking around. Don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe to see more, and I think I know what's coming next. I really want to start working on the interior because this tan's got to go. A whole new Z. A tanless, no interior Z. It looks better.